if you read in the bible if you look into the bible god always uh, you know uh, test us god always test us for example god gave a, the best gift god can give that was uh, isaac to abraham because abraham was waiting for a child for more than uh, around 100 years without children and um, god gave him when he was 100 years and after that when he was grown up the child was grown up then god said are you ready to sacrifice your son only son for me and then he was ready to give his son the best gift he was ready to sacrifice himself and he was also ready to sacrifice his best so then god was so pleased with him and blessed him so in in your life in our life we can see something has to die in order that some fruit see if you want to buy a new car you have to sacrifice some money some effort some fruits of your hard work if you want to buy a better house you may have to sacrifice your present house so if you want to uh, you know for every gain there is a sacrifice behind it even to drive a car there is a sacrifice of the fuel the fuel has to burn and only then a car will move forward everything in this world somebody or something has to sacrifice in order to give life for someone else and therefore the sacrifice is very important therefore god is asking every christian are you ready to sacrifice your whole life this life whole life means not 2000 years or 10000 years of life but god is asking you are you ready to sacrifice your small life here on earth that is maybe for 78 70 years to 80 years of your life are you ready to give it up for me when we say yes that is when we gain eternal life when we say no that is when we lose the eternal life so if you look into the world if you just look around the world and you see this this formula is applied even in the science even in the secular country secular world and also even in the what you see around everywhere there is a sacrifice in order to give life there should be a sacrifice only then there is a life praise the lord and that is why in today's gospel uh, jesus said through the word of god jesus said unless and until a wheat he says unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies it remains only a single grain saint ignatius of antioch fell down in colosseum and was eaten by the beast the lions if since he died because of the small drops of blood he shed in the colosseum thousands and thousands of christians were attracted got converted and it was a powerful seed for the foundation of the christianity and the christianity is built upon the drops of blood of the martyrs and that's why the christianity is surviving even after 2000 years and it will continue to survive without any problem because there are drops of blood is being spread, shed by so many martyrs around the world may not be known to us but there are so many unknown martyrs every day in our life in in this world therefore the church will continue the church will flourish church will move on if somewhere it dies somewhere else it will grow if it dies there somewhere else, somewhere else it will grow one day everybody will come to know the truth praise the lord so this is a fact so yesterday we started reflecting about this passage this aspect deuteronomy chapter 8 was one on words let us continue this passage yesterday we uh, studied two sentences we will continue the third uh, first and second and third and we will continue like this the entire commandment that i command you today you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase and go in and occupy the land that the lord promised on oath to your ancestors so this is the first sentence we reflected yesterday and then second sentence let us read 
the second word remember the long way that the lord your god has led you these past 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you so yesterday we were reflecting about these 40 years of journey god tested them there was a red sea experience there was lack of food experience lack of water experience there was so many calamities pandemic and some plague many problems that they had to face all these experiences they experienced in their life in order to be tested god tested them god tested them not because god doesn't know their heart but because they didn't know their heart god wanted them to know who they are and the true nature of them and that's why the testing period they had to go through we also have to face red sea experiences in our daily life i have already mentioned to you yesterday in that homily and today let us read verse 3 verse 3 onwards he says he humbled you by letting you hunger then by feeding you with manna with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the lord praise the lord once again let's read he humbled you by letting you hunger what does it mean sometimes god humbles us by letting us hunger letting us go through lack of job lack of children lack of pro lack of many things we are thirsting to get it but we don't get it the lord says i am humbling you we need humility god wants us to go through the humility experience humbling experience because that is what is lacking in us somewhere the lord is purifying us somewhere god is god is making us better somewhere he is making us a new creation therefore he says i he humbled you by letting you hunger but after that once you are ready to be cooperative in front of god and when you are ready to be humbled then he will give you feed you with manna so then another problem then again he solved the problem another problem solved the problem another problem solved the problem this is how everyone's life many people say their life is like ups and downs why because he's humbling us why god wants to humble us because he is make us making us to be like jesus we are all are supposed to be like jesus we are following jesus we are following jesus because we want to be like jesus praise the lord uh, hallelujah that is why jesus said be perfect as my heavenly father is perfect so he is jesus is perfect as his heavenly father is perfect and now he is asking us to be perfect like him because we are following him in order to experience this we need to grow sometime back two days ago when i was speaking to you about the nine grades of prayer life each grade we are growing spiritually so that we may be like jesus we will become like jesus when you are in the ninth grade you are already experiencing the pre-taste of heaven here on earth so ninth grade is called heaven on earth tenth grade is called heaven in heaven so there you will become like completely like jesus so this is how the spiritual growth the spiritual life here on earth so god is humbling us all these experiences all these enemies all those are hurting you abusing you you wounding you your husband your wife your mother your mother in law your father your father in law all of them are only an instrument in the hand of god to purify you they are appointed by god to purify you and me there are so many people whom god has appointed by god, uh, god has appointed many people to purify us therefore instead of looking at them and attacking them let us look at ourselves and cleanse us purify us humble us then it makes god's work easier and it will make us faster new creation praise the lord 
so this is what he says he humbled you by letting you hunger then by feeding you with manna with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the lord what does it mean just by bread alone you cannot live man cannot live by by bread and money so just because you have money your power your position you have bread food everything in abundance doesn't mean you will be alive we need the food you know i i have told you sometime back a human being is consisting of three parts the spirit the body and emotion spirit emotion body we are feeding body every day make sure morning job morning uh, breakfast lunch and supper we give enough and more food for body that's why body is growing we also give food for the emotion we need love we need uh, affection we need romance we need uh, every kind of emotional needs we make sure that we get it from somewhere if somebody doesn't give we will get angry with them so that we get it so we will make sure to get all the emotional food every day if you don't get anywhere at least by watching videos movies and all the other you know making phone calls we will get this emotional needs food we will feed our emotion so the emotionally also growing somewhere we are satisfied emotionally too we are trying our best to satisfy but what about spirit do we give food enough food for the spirit are we giving enough food for the spirit is our spirit getting enough food the word of god prayer love of god spiritual aspects sacrifices penances and all these things are spiritual food if we don't give the spirit the enough food you know what happens your body and emotion will grow faster and the spirit will shrink it will be very bad to look at just imagine your whole body is growing but the uh, for example whole body is growing but one hand is not growing or as a small child you are uh, your one leg is not growing less left uh, all the rest are growing then there will be problem praise the lord so the same way if a human being is consisting of three parts emotion body and spirit if only the body and emotion is growing and spirit is not growing there will be disorder that is why god said man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god so every word that we read reflect and meditate is also food for the spirit only then we will be alive otherwise we are moving dead bodies praise the lord uh, hallelujah therefore this is why this word is very important remember so verse that three he humbled you okay verse four continue reading verse four we read we, he humbled us now verse four we read like this the clothes the clothes on your back did not wear out and your feet did not swell these 40 years though god was taking you to this wilderness experience red sea experience lack of food experience 40 years they were traveling through the wilderness that through the desert but still god says though you are lacking many things you are facing lots of crises and struggles in your life the clothes on your back did not wear out your feet did not swell these 40 years as a traveler in the wilderness in the desert when you travel there are two things most important the cloth that you cover yourself the cloth because of the sandstorm because of the heat the cold at night and the heat at day daytime because of which the cloth which you wear is very important without which you cannot survive in the wilderness the second one your feet if you have problem with your feet if you do not have the sandals properly if you don't have if you have any problem with your feet you cannot walk 
if you cannot walk especially when you are having a long journey of 40 years of journey in the wilderness and you are having a problem with the leg then you will be left behind left behind means you will be left to die so this is the problem for the most important aspect when you travel in the wilderness is these two the cloth and the feet and the Lord says though you are lacking many things the most important need of your day the most important need of your life is never absent the clothes on your back did not wear out and your feet did not swell these 40 years that's why you could survive the clothes on your back did not wear out and your feet did not swell these year 40 years remember all these 40 years they had the clothes and all those things which they had from the beginning from egypt when they started they had all these things and with which they continue it's a long journey in this journey they cannot make new clothes they have to just carry what they had already but this cloth did not wear out what does it mean though you went through lots of red sea experiences lack of food lack of job lack of many things but god says the basic things of your life were not deprived of you were getting everything that was basic the basic things were never rejected though you were went through, going through terrible poverty you had food every day though you were lacking job you had basic money to survive though you were in many sins many problems but you somehow managed to live so long there are so many good good things god has already done in our life the basic things were not rejected though you have we have to go through lots of problems he says the clothes on your back did not wear out and your feet did not swell these 40 years somehow god's protected you there were many occasions where you were about to be caught but god protected you there are many occasions where you are about to die but god saved you there are many occasions where you are rejected by everyone somewhere someone came and appreciated and accepted you so god always made sure that you are receiving the basic things praise the lord so the lord says these are the testing period they had you had to go through in order to humble you and purify you and make you a new creation if you had cooperated with me the faster you cooperate the faster you will come out of this wickedness yesterday we read from the book of wisdom so this word which we read yesterday let us read once again book of wisdom chapter 4 verse 13 and 14 the word says being perfected in a short time they fulfilled long years for their souls were pleasing to the lord therefore he took them quickly from the midst of wickedness sometimes we may be going through lots of wickedness because god is purifying us if our soul is so pleasing to the lord the lord says i will take you quickly from the midst of the wickedness you will be taken out from the wickedness quickly if our souls are pleasing to the lord praise the lord now continue reading Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 4 we read like this the clothes on your back and did not wear out and your feet did not swell these 40 years verse 5 verse 5 he says know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child so the Lord your God disciplines you as the parent disciplines a child so the Lord your God disciplines you he may not discipline the neighbor's children a father may not discipline the neighbor's children but father disciplines his child i remember when i was small we were not allowed to go out of the home to neighbor's home or somewhere else to play but my friends from the neighborhood used to call and come and call me come let's go for football but i used to try to get the permission from my father and he was very strict and he never used to allow me to go out because he had a thought that I will be spoiled if I go with them. So anyway, he tried his best to protect me. And then I remember once my father was not there at home. So somehow I managed to get the permission from my mother. 
but mother gave permission with one condition you should come back before father comes back so but we went to play me uh, and the in i was so immersed in the game and i forgot to come back in time by the time i came back my father was there already standing outside the home keeping his hand behind in i knew there is a stick in his hand and i was coming back home and i was looking around and i saw all my friends all those who are playing with me they are also with me then i knew he won't uh, punish me in front of all these people if at all if he punishes me he should punish them too because it's not only me who played they also played so but when i reached in front of my father he saw i saw him looking at all the other children smiling then i was also happy i also started smiling because i found he is in a very good mood but the moment he saw me he gave me one and he gave me one and said how dare you disobey me and go out go inside and then i was so hurt and then i was so angry with my father and i had told him why didn't you beat them why did you beat only me they also played then he said they are not my child they are not my children they are neighbors children but you are my child i may look at them and smile but i may not look at you and smile you smile because you disobeyed so then he corrected me my dear brothers and sisters he corrected me because he is my father he didn't correct them because they are not his children my dear brothers and sisters our god who consider us as his children may discipline us because we should never be spoiled and remember that though i was so angry with my father the next day again i called him my father though that day i was so angry i did not call him but the next day i called him again my father i didn't just reject him and go to my neighborhood and neighbor's house and start staying there and say okay from today you are my father because i don't like my that father so you are my father i did not deny my father and go to the neighbor and call him father because though he punished me i know he is my father my dear brothers and sisters there are occasions when god disciplines you and me sometimes we may deny our god father and go for some other gods some other fathers there are many people who does it they did not just because that is why some people when they have some suffering they look at and god i don't believe in god from today i'm an atheist from today i'm an agnostic you are accepting some other fathers my dear brothers and sisters father is not somebody like you know like to change like dress you have only one father we should be like a person who has only one father my dear brothers and sisters therefore if our father or mother disciplines us we should accept this discipline because it is not for our harm jeremiah 29 verse 11 we read like this we read like this jeremiah 29 verse 11 i know for surely i know the plans i have for you it is not for your harm but it is for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope praise the lord to give you a future with hope praise the lord hallelujah let us read hebrew chapter 12 was seven onwards hebrew chapter 12 was seven onwards and your trials for the sake of discipline god is treating you as children for what child is there whom a parent does not discipline and your trials for the sake of discipline god is treating you as children for what child is there whom a parent does not discipline every father and mother if they love their children they will discipline their children many things will be forbidden many things will not be given to you so that is because they love you praise the lord i remember i once sometime back i was in a train journey and there was one parent and with a small child and every time some vendors passed by inside the train with chocolate sweets this child used to cry and then the father her father used to buy some chocolate and give it to her then she eats for some time and then throw it there and again continue playing 
Then when someone else comes selling something, she she is to start crying. Then suddenly, in order to calm calm her, the parent, the father, used to buy that thing and give it to this child. And it continued for a long time. This child was just making use of this opportunity. She was crying and controlling her father. And cry was her weapon to control her father. Then I knew, here, the child is controlling the father. So, after some time, one ice cream fellow came to sell the ice cream. Then she started crying and then the father was about to buy the ice cream and give it to her. Then I asked the father, asked her father, I said, is it your child? Then she, he said, yes. Then I said, don't spoil your child. Then he said, why am I spoiling my child? I said, this child is a small child. And her desires are also small, small desires. Chocolate, sweets, ice cream. These are the small desires of this small child. But remember, she is growing. As she is growing, her desire is also growing. And now she knows how to satisfy all her desires. She knows how to use you. How to get the things done. She is satisfying all her desires. But after some time when she is grown up, her desires also will grow. And those desires which she is going to ask you in the future, you may not be able to fulfill it. Because those desires will be different. Because she is growing. Therefore, if you deny then, she will be shocked. Because you never denied any desire. Therefore, don't spoil her by satisfying all her desires, but teach her how to sacrifice her desire. Then he said, what shall I do? I said, don't buy this ice cream. You have already bought enough for her. So tell her, now you have to sacrifice this desire. Then he said, looked at this girl and said, no ice cream. Continue playing with your chocolate, whatever you throw it there, take it. And then... Use it, don't spoil, don't waste money. Then she got angry. She started shouting, screaming, lo loudly attack and started attacking him. Then suddenly she, he said, the father of the child looked at her and said, it is not I who said to not to give you, that, that father who is sitting in front of you. Then she came running to me. She started attacking me. She was a small child. She started attacking me, hitting me. And I was just looking at her and smiling. And after some time, she got fed up with the attacking. And then she went to the window, holding the window, looking outside. And she decided there is no meaning in crying. Therefore, there, she stopped crying. After some time, again this ice cream fellow came. Then suddenly, this ice cream fellow was showing all the ice creams in front of this girl. She looked at the ice cream fellow. And then she looked at her father. She was about to cry. Then suddenly, he said, no. Then suddenly he, she looked at me. I closed my eyes and pretended as if I am sleeping. And then she knew there is no choice but just ignore it. And then she decided not to look at the ice cream fellow. Started looking outside. For the first time maybe in her life she learned how to sacrifice. My dear brothers and sisters, don't satisfy all the desires. Because tomorrow... You will not be able to satisfy all the desires. Because we are all growing. But therefore, teach our children, teach everyone how to sacrifice. The value of sacrifice. Value of sacrifice. This value of sacrifice will help in the future to sacrifice many of the pleasures of the body. If you are not trained in the small, small things, how are you going to be faithful in the greater things? That is why Jesus said, be faithful in the least and then I'll, I will entrust you greater. If you are not able to sad, sacrifice small, small desires of your body, how are you going to sacrifice the greater desire of the body? For example, sexuality. If you are not used to sacrifice small, small desire, it is impossible to sacrifice the desire of your sexuality. Those who are not good at sacrificing small, small things, let me tell you, you are not good at sacrificing the desire of sexual life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why the church always encourages its faithful.
to go for small small sacrifices for example friday avoid meat and then lent lenten observance advent observance and some special days the days of ob abstinence days of abstinence days of fasting these all these act, you know small small important feast and celebrations and special days are appointed by god so that we may have control on our flesh the flesh should not control us the church is so brilliant it knows how to how to help you if you are just faithful to the church and the command of the church it is very easy to lead a christian life praise the lord a hallelujah therefore the bible says end your trials for the sake of discipline god is treating you as his children for what child is there whom a parent does not discipline was eight was eight continue reading was eight if you do not have that discipline in which all children share then you are illegitimate and not his children if anybody feels that you are not corrected if anyone feels that god is not disciplining you you don't have any red sea experience you don't have any lack of food experience you don't have any lack of drinks experience if you don't have any dessert experience remember you are in danger you are not a legitimate child may not be god doesn't accept you as a child because some way we have lost it we if you, god has considered you as a child then be ready to go through these experiences because he and he understands that he is our father we understand that he is our father therefore he will discipline us praise the lord a hallelujah looking at this discipline experience many people say the more i come closer to god the more suffering that is a many the reason many people say that is because we treat our father very badly let us treat our father as our father because he is treating us as children so when my father was correcting me i did not leave him saying being in this family is very horrible because he is always punishing me so i am going to stay from today from in the neighbor's house that is a wrong choice they will not tolerate you for more than one day and after third day you will be homeless praise the lord therefore if god the father trains us disciplines us let us accept it he does it out of love to protect us to uh, to prune us and to make us a new creation therefore after some time you will start eating the fruits of it praise the lord you know when i look back into my family we were four children now all out of four two of us have become priest the uh, the my sister and brother they are married and leading a very good peaceful happy family life and therefore in our time we are enjoying the peace of mind peace of mind in the family and also my parents having a peace of mind my dear brothers and sisters every discipline will produce something good therefore always be open to it praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus let us continue chapter 8 of the deuteronomy chapter verse 6 deuteronomy 5 verse 5 continue reading verse 5 know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child so the lord your god disciplines you verse 6 therefore keep the commandments of the lord your god by walking in his ways and by fearing him two things walk in his ways and fear him walk in his ways fear him always keep the commandments that is for our protection praise the lord the freedom the true freedom means obedient to the commandment and walking in his ways and fearing him then you are completely free if not you will become a slave verse 7 continue reading verse 7 for the lord your god is bringing you into a good land why all these disciplines why these testing period why this red sea experience because god the father he is bringing you into a good land god is bringing you and me to a good land 
What can a land? A land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills. So, my dear brothers and sisters, all this suffering, everything is meaningful. We are not going to perish. It is not the end. We are entering into a land, a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills. Continue. Not only that, a land of wheat and barley, of wines and fig trees and pomegranates and land of olive trees and honey. The richness of the land is explained here in this sentence. Continue. And he says, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, nothing will be lacking. A land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. So there will be lots of wealth, lots of protection, lots of blessing. Nothing will be lacking. So that is the land where we are going through. Going to. That is where God is taking us to. Therefore, this momentary painful experience of discipline actions, accept it because it is God, it is for our good. God is purifying us. God is making us to know who we are. God is testing us. God is making us a new creation. Verse 10. Continue reading verse 10. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Once you enter into the peace of mind, once you enter into the promised land, once you experience God's blessing in your life, then you should thank the Lord, bless the Lord, your God for the good land that he has given you. Once you experience happiness, for example, you are praying for a job and you got a job. When you got a job, when you get a job, you should thank the Lord for giving you this job. You are praying for a marriage life. You entered into married life. Once you enter there, you have to thank God and bless the Lord for all the blessings you are given. Even for a gift of child, you should thank the Lord. I have seen many people, once they experience, they thirst for some blessings. Once they get blessing, instead of thanking God, they are thirsting for the next blessing. I have seen one, one person, he came here and said, Father, I don't have a job. And he attended a retreat and went. Within one month, he got a job. And he said, Father, I got a job. And he said, praise the Lord. You should come and attend another retreat to thank God. And he said, Father, now I am very busy. Duty, no time. And after five, six months, he came back again. I said, at last you came back to thank God. Then he said, no father, I have come because this job is not sufficient. I need a better job. So some people are like this. They are not thanking God for what they got. They said it's not enough. If you think it's not enough, it is not sufficient. It is not what I expected. Then you will never thank God. You will wait until you are satisfied. Such people will never be satisfied. Therefore, they will never thank God. Praise the Lord. So the Lord says, you shall eat your fill and your fill. You shall eat your fill and then you should bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. This is one condition. Anyone who experiences a blessing, you should thank God after that. If you have forgotten to thank God for your husband, if you have forgotten to God, thank God for your wife after your marriage, you may be so excited about your husband and wife for some time. But have you ever thanked God? Maybe you thanked your husband and thanked wife saying, Okay, thank you for accepting me as your husband, accepting me as your wife. You must have thanked your husband or wife saying, Honey, I thank you. And uh, uh, you must have said many goody words saying thank you very much. But what about God? Whom you, who has given you this husband, given you this wife? Have you ever thanked him? For this wonderful marriage, wonderful husband, wonderful wife. If you miss that, then remember, they may have some problems. Because you have not given authority to God. You took authority for all these. You took all the credit for this marriage. You took the credit for your husband. You take, took the credit for your wife. Therefore, it's your duty to solve the problem. Praise the Lord. Therefore, the Lord says, once you enjoy anything, any blessing, any protection, anything, start thanking God. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this. Thank you, Lord, for this job. I remember one day, one gentleman 
one boy who came to our retreat he came and gave me one cover then i asked him what is this he said this is my first salary i said the whole salary he said yes the whole salary not one one tenth of the salary but the whole salary then i said why did you give this whole salary normally the people give the tithe but not the whole salary so i asked him then he said father i was a engineering student very good student i was the first rank holder and in my university everyone said as soon as you finish your studies many companies will come and hijack you they will take you fast you will get job very sure you will get the best job with the best salary because they were all sure because you was the most studious child uh, student in the university and therefore he never used to depend on god because he is more than sufficient for himself god was not needed for him he never used to pray and he used to spend lot of time for studies then after his studies he waited for job many offers came but he was not happy about those offers he rejected one by one everything because he was expecting bigger ones the best one meanwhile all his classmates got very good job and they left but he did not get any job he waited one month two months six months five and then one year no job and then even small jobs also did not come to him because he had denied everything and at the end everyone who met him they asked him how come you did not get any job you are the best student and he was he was ashamed to answer to these people and he stopped going out of home then he started spending lot of time in front of computer watching movies closing his room sitting in, inside the home he was afraid to come out of the room because the moment his mother and father says you are wasting your time here they start accusing him you spoiled your life you are not searching for job you are not accepting job you are like this you are like that everyone start accusing him therefore he stopped coming for food and when everyone finished food he goes and eat something from the kitchen and goes to the room and lock the room sit and watch the movies after movies because he started hating his life then somebody and slowly slowly he was start not taking bath and his hair became big and long beard and uh, all these things and he was not interested in cleaning himself and then slowly everybody noticed he was going into depression and someone somehow managed to bring him to the retreat center when he attended the retreat he came to know his mistake he knew this is where i made a mistake in my busy life i forgot the most valuable thing that is jesus instead of accepting jesus i gave important for my studies and never search for jesus and now the my studies did not do anything in my life then he attended a retreat and during the retreat he promised to god and said any job that is going to come at the earliest i will accept it whether it's small or big after the retreat he got a job a small job he accepted it and he started working and it is within 3 ma- four months he got a very good job beyond his expectation then he accepted that job and it was the dream job which, which was waiting more than that and then the first salary he brought to the lord and said father this only god deserves the credit for this though i was good this is nothing but the blessing not because of my qualification but because of simple grace of god my dear brothers and sisters he knew the importance of god therefore my dear brothers and sisters we may be brilliant very good family very good everything is very good it's all because of our capacity but in our heart to heart we have to acknowledge it's not me god's blessing we have to give all credit to god and give authority in the hand of god if not we are in danger we may experience red sea experiences in our marriage life we may experiences red sea experiences in the financial life we may experiences red sea experiences in many of our lives life moments so my dear brothers and sisters you shall eat your fill and bless the lord your god for the good land that he has given you verse 11 verse 11 we read therefore 
take care that you do not forget to the lord your god my brothers and sisters this is very very important once you are settled once you get a very good job very good salary very good house very good car very good family there is a possibility you may forget god before that you used to go for daily mass holy mass daily prayer but once everything is settled you will slowly stop your prayer life slowly stop your daily prayer your rosary will be reduced into one hail mary each for each decade instead of 10 hail marys we may go for shortcuts because we start of forgetting the lord your god therefore the lord says once you reach the promised land once you are settled once you start eating your fill take care that you do not forget to the lord your god by failing to keep his commandments this is what happened to the developed countries there is under developed countries have more faith in god than the developed countries because in the developed countries everything is provided security insurance and protection and everything is given my dear brothers and sisters that is why the depression rate is increasing and many of the marriage the divorce rate is increasing in the developed countries more than the underdeveloped countries because everyone knowingly or unknowingly start to think i am more than sufficient take care that you do not forget the lord your god when once you are financially stabilized protected you may lose it any time one pandemic is enough within one or two months we will lose everything one small crisis is enough my dear brothers and sisters god has given us warning after warning some years ago all the banks collapsed the economic crisis which had affected the all the developed countries have you not forgotten my dear brothers and sisters now the pandemic now in the future we do not know what is waiting for us next therefore take care that you do not forget the lord your god by failing to his, keep his commandments for us now the god's commandment is not so important human ordinances passed by the parliaments which are against the divine law we shout for the right my dear brothers and sisters by failing to keep his commandments his ordinances and his statutes which i am commanding you today please do not forget these the lord says verse 12 continue reading verse 12 when you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them now you are eating mcdonalds F kfc and fish and chips and all these food morning afternoon evening different varieties and after you have eaten your fill then a beautiful house maybe through mortgage or somehow what build a beautiful house and living in them was 13 continue reading when you have eaten your fill and build the houses and live in them and when your herds and flocks are multiplied in the old testament in the olden times herds and flocks means your bank account your bank balance according to the number of herds and flocks you are accordingly you are rich so today it is bank account so when your bank account is be becoming bigger and bigger multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied you are your wealth your storage is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied blessings and everything is multiplied when everything is protected when you have got enough and more silver and gold lots of money in the bank and when everything is multiplied was put in when everything is multiplied then do not exalt yourself then there is a possibility that you may exalt yourself forgetting the lord saying this is my hard work this is my house this is my car this is because of my job it is because of my salary what did you do husband is asking wife wife is asking husband 
you are wasting your life you don't contribute anything to, anything to this family i am the one who is working hard day and night these are all my hard work why are you staying here why don't you just leave you know we start exalting ourselves the lord is watching my dear brothers and sisters today you may be the earning one member but tomorrow you need not be the earning member anything can happen even a slip in the bath bathroom is enough to fall down and lie down once and for all therefore please do not exalt ourselves saying that it is my hard work it is my capacity it is my job then do not exalt yourself forgetting the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt out of the house of slavery it is god who brought you out of egypt it is god who took you from some different countries and brought you england and gave you the visa house job everything and therefore don't exalt yourself there are so many people who are more capable than all of you is still staying in those countries and struggling it is not of any of your merit it is just because of grace of god is freely given to you you are given all these blessings therefore don't exalt yourself but exalt god praise the lord therefore do not exalt yourself forgetting the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt out of the house of slavery this is very important my dear brothers and sisters many a time we forget this we think about our capacities abilities talents and power and every strength that we have and depend on it then sometimes god sends small small red sea experiences like the pandemic and many other things so that we should know how weak we are america the most powerful country in the world came to know how weak they are in front of this small invis in invisible enemy they were capable of going to any country without their permission infiltrate into those countries and kill anyone whom they want but they are struggling to just remove these viruses my dear brothers and sisters this is same with every country but just one an example since that is the country most uh, you know famous and powerful in this world therefore my dear brothers and sisters this can happen to each and every one of us sometimes we think most powerful i'm so good in this i'm good in that but all this goodness that we think it is not our capacity just a blessing of god therefore all glory to god all praises to god my dear brothers and sisters we should glorify the lord praise the lord hallelujah verse 15 continue verse 15 we read like this verse 15 who led you through the great and terrible wilderness god sent you and led you through great and terrible wilderness wilderness these wilderness are terrible through all these terrible wilderness god led you through and arid east land with poisonous snakes and scorpions he made water flow for you from the flint rock god blessed you so many blessings unexpected things impossible things god made it possible and all these impossible things which made possible was not because of your capacity it is because of a grace of god god blessed you verse 16 continue reading verse 16 and fed you in the wilderness with manna manna was not prepared by any one of us is just came from heaven is a heavenly food and that your ancestors did not know to humble you to test you and in the end to do you good all these things the poisonous snake and red sea experience lack of food lack of meat lack of water and all these wilderness experience that you all have gone through god permitted in your life to humble you to test you and in the end to do you good the ultimate aim of god in allowing you to go through all these crisis moments are to do good to you please don't forget this last word to do you good praise the lord hallelujah at the end there is good at the end there is best the best is waiting for us verse 17 continue reading verse verse 17 therefore do not say to yourself my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth don't ever say it's all because of my power my wealth my my strength don't ever say this 
if even in your heart you should never say this even if you ever think of it please for ask forgiveness from god and say god i thank you this is nothing but your blessing this bank balance is nothing but your blessing this health is nothing but your blessing this protection that you have given me is nothing but your blessing this preaching which i give is not nothing but your blessing my dear brothers and sisters everything is just blessing of god all glory to god sometimes i have seen during the preaching when i am so happy about my own preaching and suddenly i become completely blank and the next moment i don't know what to say it happened many times i don't know whether you noticed and that is the time i make blah 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 and then not able to proceed and make you say hallelujah 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 because i'm not able to continue because nothing else is coming into my mind i've completely become blank and that is when god is telling me you know it is not because of your any capacity it is not because of any memory power not because of your any intellect that you have it's only because i'm giving you something to speak and you speak if i don't give you become blank praise the lord hallelujah a hallelujah and sometimes it happens my dear brothers and sisters we need to understand it is not because of my power and my might it is just because he is graciously giving us in time what i'm supposed to speak what i'm supposed to do praise the lord verse 18 continue reading verse 18 was 18 but remember the lord your god it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today many time i always remember you know i'm not worthy to receive what i'm receiving today all the blessings all the protection all the blessings but i know there may be there are so many good people my father and mother my grandfather and my mother who was so committed to god and prayer to full to god and made sure to go for daily mass and the covenant that they have entered into with god god is so committed and faithful in the covenant that he has made with them therefore god is blessing me the same way all of you remember even if you are not praying even though you do not go for mass and prayer but still the blessings are coming to you from somewhere the blessings are coming to you unlike the other people who do not go who do really go to church every day but still not so much so much of blessing but you have blessing even though you don't go don't think it is because of your capacity not don't think that you are somebody great don't think i don't need god because they go for mass daily but still they are not blessed i don't go for mass but still i am blessed therefore i don't need god there are many people who says this but bible says very clearly sometimes it happens it is because not because of any of your merit but because somebody in your family tree maybe your parents your grandparents or somebody in your family was so faithful to god committed to god and they had entered into a, a strong covenant with god which god is so faithful and is blessing their ancestors they are descendants and you are one of them but they gain something for you they through their covenant that they have made with god and that is what you are enjoying today but what did you gain for your children they made it for you they got it for you they got into the covenant and they made sure that their children are blessed and you are blessed though you are not so committed to god then what did you gain for your children what are you going to give the spiritual heritage the heritage of blessing do you have something to give it to your children examine your conscience and see if not it is time for you to gain something for your children so that your children may enjoy you to enjoy praise the lord thank you jesus praise you jesus therefore verse continue reading continue reading verse 19 If you do forget the Lord your God and follow other gods to serve and worship them sometimes you forget after all these blessings you may forget God and follow other gods make money as your god fame as your god name as your god and you make many things as your god and start worshiping them 
I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. Today I warn you solemnly that you will perish. Verse 20. Verse 20. Like the nations that the Lord is destroying before you. There are so many nations were destroyed when Israelites came to Israel. Not because God hated them. But because they denied God. They disobeyed God. They went against the command of God. Therefore they were disregarded and rejected. And they were destroyed. Remember if you don't follow God. If you don't believe in God. If you don't accept him. If you exalt yourself instead of exalting God. Like the nations that the Lord is destroying before you. So shall you perish. Because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Praise the Lord. Let's all close your eyes and pray. Let us ask God, Lord forgive us. There are occasions where we have not given importance for you. But instead we exalted ourselves and waste, waited for blessings and exaltation, fame and name, appreciation and many things. Forgotten you Lord. All what I have today is nothing but your grace. Nothing but your blessing. We are grateful to you all throughout your, our life Lord. Forgive us for those moments where we exalted ourselves. Let's close our eyes and ask forgiveness from God and say, Lord, I'm sorry.